If you enjoy this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for just $5 a month. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner for more information. Hey guys, this is Julian Gray of Julian Gray Media, and today we're doing an episode that's a bit of a departure from my normal content on this channel. Typically on this channel, you can find Ableton tutorials, audio hardware and software reviews, and similar topics of discussion. But today's video, we're diving into my history a little bit more to cover a topic that I'm really passionate about, and I hope you guys find it interesting as well. So before I dove heavily into digital media, video, uh, electronic music, graphic design, etc. I was actually more interested in both visual arts, like drawn out paint and that sort of stuff, and even more than that, computers and digital electronics. I used to love taking computers apart, reassembling them, repairing and restoring old computers, and you know, building PCs of my own. Throughout middle school and high school, I was actually an intern for the school system, and I was essentially an apprentice for someone who managed the domain, added new machines to the network, repaired the old ones, etc. So I got really, really into computers throughout high school to the point where I kind of burnt out of them, and then I needed to express that creative side of me as well. So the marriage of that computer background, the software history, and the, you know, the artistic prowess that I got from my, my father who's a musician and my mother who's an avid music fan of electronic music, kind of met in the middle in this marriage of electronic music. All of that creative side and all of that like right-brained uh, analytical tech side and married them together and that's really what electronic music is. But before I got into electronic music, as I said, I was very invested in digital electronics and tech. And that's something that I wanna start exploring a little bit more on this channel. I haven't really had the space or time to work on things like this. Now that we're in quarantine and now that I have a larger space, I live in downtown LA, where there's an endless supply of old tech to find on sites like Facebook Market, Craigslist, etc. I decided to start buying and repairing and restoring old computers like I used to. One company I'm especially passionate about because of their care for design and quality and essentially artists in general is Apple. Um, I actually have, I don't know if you can see it, a vintage Apple poster. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can actually see it. From 1998, uh, when Steve Jobs came back to Apple celebrating creative people, the iconic Think Different campaign. And some of the computers that we're gonna look at today are from that similar era. About a month ago, I was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and I saw this incredible Apple laptop lot that I had to pick up. There was an iBook G3 from 1999 in box, which is an incredible collectible uh, for anyone who is passionate about old tech or even like vintage Apple. There's a PowerBook G4 from 2002 in box as well, a 2007 MacBook Pro and a 2010 MacBook Pro. And I got this for an incredible deal of like 150 bucks, so I knew I had to make a video about it. Hopefully some of you guys are as interested in computers as I am. I don't blame you if you're not, but I promise you that all of these computers that I purchased, I have a very, very cool project in mind for involving old software, notably Ableton. And I promise that this stuff is going to be relevant to that in a future video. So without any further ado, here's all of the footage I caught during the process of collecting these machines and restoring them to their former glory. Apologies in advance for the iPhone video. I didn't want to carry around a DSLR while recording this while I was working on the machines. Let's get started. Whoosh. You guys know I'm a bit of a old tech enthusiast, notably Apple stuff. And I saw this ad on Facebook Marketplace today and I was like, I have to buy it. This is a lot of old Apple products. Uh, this is a, I think it's a 2006 or seven MacBook Pro. This is a 2010 MacBook Pro my cat is enjoying. <laughs> but what I really bought this for was these inbox vintage Apple laptops. This is a iBook and this is a PowerBook G4. The design is really, really, you know, it speaks for itself and it almost would be a cool, like sit on the shelf kind of piece because of how beautiful the design is. Really screams like Steve Jobs era Apple. Here's the G4 PowerBook. Still beautiful design to this day. 
even you know 20 years later well that one's not quite that old that one's more like 15 years ago this one's more in the 20 year window i think the macbook pros uh i might try to you know sell or flip but these guys are for the personal collection trackpad's cracked in here and i think the battery's jacked up i'm gonna have to do a battery replacement and trackpad replacement if i sell that this is probably the most sellable one it's a 2010 macbook pro 15. And then this is a 15 inch 2006 7, which are not worth very much, but you know, it's a cool piece anyway. But yeah, I thought I'd show you guys that for those of you who are Apple enthusiasts like me, um, and really just good design enthusiasts or old tech enthusiasts in general, I think this will bring a smile to your face. This is a MacBook Pro from 2007, but what I really want to do is put these aside and get into these guys because these are like as old as me. <laughs> not quite. I was like probably you know, five when these came out. This is an iBook G3. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. This is in somebody's garage, oh, clearly. There's a spider oh, well, there's a spider in the lid, but look. Oh, oh my god. They got a bug in there. Oh my god. Mm. I'm definitely going to clean this off. I love that old font too, it's really cool. The iMovie. iMovie 2. <laughs> <laughs> From like, for Mac OS 9. So this is pre Mac OS 10. So this is like 1990 something. Probably 99. Okay, so Mac OS 9.1. Okay, so it has Mac OS X coupon. Interesting. Oh boy, that, that's mold. That's mold. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna have to clean that up. Again, I think somebody left this in their garage for years on end, and this is the result. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. The old, um, the old uh, rotating one, it used to rotate around this axis back in the day. So we're gonna try this out. Um, I'm gonna plug that in in a minute. I need to wipe this off like as soon as possible. Okay, so this is the charger. It's the old like wind up style from, you know, power books of old. Almost looks like an RCA connector. Um, I'm gonna plug it in there and I'm gonna plug this in and we're gonna get some power to this thing for the first time since who knows when because this is sitting in some guy's garage. Next on my list is, next on my list of vintage Apple products is the clamshell. I really want one of those. It didn't explode. That's a good sign. Here we are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> These old computers take a second. I can hear the hard drive in there chugging away. God. It's gonna, probably gonna take yeah two to three minutes to start, so. Um, like two or three years. I wonder what Mac OS this is running because um, it says on the box, um, you know, 9.1. It also says supports OS X, and it does say 2001. And it's like very early OS X. It wasn't like until a little bit later it became really popular. So I'm excited to see what this is running. Pre Mac OS X is like, like Windows 98. It's like old school Macintosh. I almost hope that it's running like OS 9, um, but I think it's running OS 10 based on this boot screen. And we've been running OS 10 ever since like 1999 or 2000 when they announced it, when Steve came back to Apple. Big Sur, which is this year's Mac OS, is OS 11, the first one since. Mm. This precedes the iPod, mm. or it's like very similar era. At least the iPod mini, or yeah. Yeah, I gotta get Gordon some ad time. Oh yeah. Have you guys heard of Gordon's nonprofit? It's really important, <laughs> really important cause. Hey. Hi. Hi. Okay, so this is what was in the manual oh. sleeve. Oh, Mac OS X, there it goes. 
Well, it took like five minutes, but um, quickly before we get into this, I don't think I have the password to this account. Oh, there wasn't a password to the account. Wow, so they just cleared it off. Okay, so the, the CMOS battery is probably dead, but this is, let's see. Let's see if I was right about this. It's Mac OS 10, but let's see which version. 10.4, wow, this is running Tiger. That's actually very surprising because Tiger came out in like 2005 or six. It's got 256 megabytes of RAM, 500 megahertz PowerPC G3 processor, and I wonder how much space it has on it. That's crazy. I'm amazed that this started up, to be honest with you. And it's running Tiger, such a complex operating system for its age. This thing was designed for like Mac OS 9. All right, let's see. Capacity, it's got an 18 gigabyte hard drive. <laughs> this thing's an old boy. Let's see if the dot comes up. Yep, there it is. Oh my God, Photoshop 7. I have to open that. Like we're gonna have to do that in the old Word, old Safari. The Safari logo largely hasn't changed, which is really impressive, actually. Okay, so really quickly, this is the stuff that came in the manual. Um, it's off Apple software proof of purchase coupons. To get macOS updates and special offers from Apple, you'll need these coupons before or below as proof that you've purchased the macOS software. So I think you have to use this, like maybe at Apple Store. Oh, you actually you, you have to in. mail it in to get replacement macOS or an updated macOS. That's crazy. And then this is the license agreement that we skip on iOS these days. Welcome to Mac OS X. So yeah, so I'm surprised that it's on Tiger, which is 10.4, because I expected this to be on nine or the original Mac OS X. It says like upgrade your computer to OS 10 from nine, which is like that vintage looking Mac OS. But, Whoever owned this laptop before did a good job in keeping it up to date and running uh, newer operating systems because 10.4 is actually relatively recent compared to, you know, OS 9, which came out in the 90s, and then uh, the original OS 10, which is like OG when Steve came back to Apple. Really cool. I'm just giving you a brief look through. Not really relevant to this because we were running Tiger. I actually have the Leopard install CD at home. I might, you know, try to install that. What would be really cool is some like vintage Apple like memorabilia. So yeah, this is Mac OS 9. Looks a lot like, like Windows 98. Um, it was ahead of Windows 98 in visuals, but I think technically um, it, was, it was definitely far behind. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I think that's good. I mean, you, you can see the age of this based on, you know, the camera. There's a dog. Apple works. Yeah, this is, this is very old. Okay, iBook getting started guide. <laughs> so that's how that's supposed to look. Um, it definitely doesn't look like that now. Um, Maybe it with a little bit of elbow grease, as they say, can make it I think the hard plastic's yellowed. I don't think you're gonna be able to yeah, get that out. <gasps> stickers. Oh my God, vintage Apple stickers. And you can tell they're like not per perfectly cut. Like they weren't like as anal about that. Apple Care, I'm pretty sure it's expired. More than sure, it expires after six months. <laughs> that's, that's everything that came in the manual. I don't think it's gonna connect to my Wi-Fi, but we can try it. Yeah, no way. It's way too old. Yeah, it's not gonna. It's not gonna take the new Wi-Fi. But if I find an old router, I could probably do it. Really quickly, guys, I want to show you this. I wanted to go to the applications folder and show you what's in here. Um, I can tell this is an artist's computer or was an artist's computer um, because of the software that's on here. Last modified in 2005, there's stuff early as uh, 2002 on here. But there's a Pentax program, Photoshop 7, which is, you know, clearly Adobe. Um, but there's also Final Cut Pro on here and Handbrake, which is a video encoding program. This is actually added in 2006, which is surprisingly new. And actually, if you know Handbrake, they actually haven't updated the logo since then, 
which is astounding to me. Um, let me know if you wanna see me edit a video in this old version of Final Cut. This was added to this computer in 1999. That's two years after I was born. My girlfriend was born in 1999. There's some other stuff in here too. Um, let's see what is under installers, install AOL for Mac. <laughs> Internet Explorer came pre-installed uh, during Mac OS's original launch for OS X. Microsoft helped support them because they were going bankrupt. App, uh, Steve came back to Apple and then he asked a favor of Bill Gates to, to help them out and bail them out. So they, they put Internet Explorer as the default browser on Mac, which was unpopular at the time, but I think um, it's a pretty cool relic now to see a collaboration like that. We got Microsoft Office X, which is added in 2003. I'm assuming I'm assuming it's like Office 2003, four then, which I actually used to have on my old MacBook. I had a MacBook, the old white one from 2006, and I had, I believe, that version of Microsoft Office. It might have been the, the slightly newer version because of the um, the Intel processor instead of PowerPC, but uh, it's pretty cool anyway. And it's got Quark on here too. Um, my grandmother uses Quark. Uh, she used to when she was a uh, designer. And that's that's pretty much it. I mean, most of the stuff that's on here else besides that is is mostly, you know, built-in software on Mac OS even back then. And surprisingly, a lot of this is remarkably similar to how it is now. I'm really excited to look at the other ones too, but this one was like the creme de la creme because this is so old. It just It's just very nostalgic to me. I haven't used OS X Tiger since uh, I think I had a Power Mac G4 or G5. I had both the G5 and G4, and I was originally running uh, Tiger, and I installed Leopard over it, but I haven't used Tiger since. I think my grandmother had a iMac G5 uh, because she wanted to run old classic environment stuff. My grandmother's a designer, and um, you know she did a lot of creative work in the old days of Mac OS. She had a Mac OS 9 install, and you couldn't use that classic environment software on Leopard, so she always stayed on Tiger. So she is probably the last person I know with Tiger. She actually has that Mac. She actually has that Mac set up in her office still. Uh, the most recent time I touched a Mac version that wasn't like current, or at least within a you know margin of error, was probably Leopard on my old Power Mac G5. So this is even older than that. And I would love to get like nine running on here just to you know see how it was back in the day. It's really cool. Let's try out the PowerBook now. Just a quick look at the box of this PowerBook G4. It looks remarkably similar to their, you know, mid 2000s design. You can see the Apple logo on the side, very minimal and clean, just like it currently is, I guess. Um, 2003 Apple computer. So this guy was released in 2003. There's the specs right there. And there's that timeless Mac logo. This is clearly more modern as you can see. It looks like their new stuff. Designed by Apple in California. This is the Mac OS install disc. There it is right there. The old boy itself, the Mac or the PowerBook G4, which is the precursor to that other MacBook Pro we have, um, came out around the same time. When they switched to Intel, they went from this guy to that guy, and they just changed the processor out. The body's largely the same. Okay, everybody say hi to Kroger. This is not This is my son, the Axolotl. <laughs> um, so this is the PowerBook G4. This one is actually in the best condition of the entire bunch. I'm assuming that they bought this computer to replace the iBook. And then shortly thereafter, like everyone who bought around 2005, 2006, they switched processor architecture from PowerPC to Intel. And it seems like this guy only got a little bit of use because you can see like the bottom is really good condition. Um, the sides really good condition. You know, the top is as well. And if you actually look at the um, the inside, it looks great as well. The only thing is it's missing this delete key. I had bought a G5 right when they switched over too, so um, I know that struggle for whoever owned this before. We're just gonna turn it on. This one's like in the best condition of the bunch. Oh man, cool. I might watch a DVD on here. <laughs> on the front loading DVD drive. I feel like the only like acceptable movie to watch on like 
a laptop this old is like Finding Nemo. Pixar, yeah, <laughs> has to be Pixar. If you didn't know, Steve Jobs bought Pixar from George Lucas in the early 2000s. He initially wanted to make it a hardware company to sell animation hardware. Look at how fast that booted compares, compared to the other one. He wanted to do that, uh, but it flopped. So he, he decided, okay, instead of making hardware, let's make animations. And then they put together a short film that did well at uh, film festivals. It's called Tin Toy. And it inspired Disney to collaborate with Pixar and make Toy Story, which is the first full length animated film. And it was like, destroyed the box office. That first animated, computer animated. First computer animated film. Get it right there. Full length. <laughs> you can see this is much more modern design. The bezels are tiny and it looks really pretty. None of your trusted wireless networks are found. This one actually might connect because this is from like 2006. Um, the iBook is from two thousand or like nineteen ninety nine two thousand, so there's a high probability that that one wouldn't connect to my router, but this one might actually do it. Look at this relic right here, this old old Spotify logo. I am positive that doesn't work anymore, but um, I just want to launch it just to see. Now you have to log in, of course, because you know <laughs> they want their money. Um, let's do about this Mac and see what see what this guy is. This is a Power Mac, uh, PowerPC G4 1.67 gigahertz processor. This one's also on Tiger, a newer revision of Tiger. And this is uh, 1.5 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM, which is much better than a quarter of a gig. And this is a 75 gig hard drive. So that's, that's much more reasonable than like 20, though it's still tiny. The oldest version of GarageBand, iDVD, <laughs> Uh, iMovie, iPhoto, iTunes. You, I've actually seen people get a lot of life out of these even though they aren't Intel with uh, Linux um, because you can't really get a better operating system than this. It's actually surprisingly fast. It's like snapping around. And if, let's see if there's anything cool in this guy. So Art Director's Toolkit. I'm really assuming that this is owned by some sort of uh, media industry person. Installers FileMaker Pro. <laughs> I haven't heard that name in years. Let's scroll down here a little bit more. iWork, which is like the pages in Keynote, yeah. I haven't seen those particular icons or pages in Keynote in years. There really isn't anything super special. There's Omni, Graph, QuickBooks. <laughs> Maybe this is the accountant of the, of the company. Let's go ahead and try to connect to the internet on this guy. It might actually do it. Yeah, this one actually does. Oh man, cool. Oh man, we're online on this ancient computer. Okay, so the first thing we have to try is Spotify, clearly. I don't think this will work. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. So this, this version of Spotify, I have to accept a user agreement, apparently. About Spotify, yeah. Okay, this version was from 2011. That's surprising. I don't even know if at the time you could actually Search artists. I don't think you could. I think Spotify was like radio, strictly so like, radio and like playlist based. Oh, we're still in offline mode. Emo. Yeah. So this is uh this is really like meta right now. This is the Apple website loaded on a you know PowerBook older than a decade. It's not really loading, <laughs> but but you know, it's getting the idea across. Here's the iPhone 12. It's launching like today, tomorrow, whatever. I want to see if YouTube works. Probably not. Okay, yeah. Maybe like Google. Like Google search surely has to work, right? Because Google's very good about being, yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Ah, there I am. Julian Gray. And, you know, this is proof that I have pretty good SEO because this computer knows nothing about me. <laughs> and I appear right there at the top, which is awesome. So we're gonna, you know, break out the trusty Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> and his favorite movie. Get it in there. Uh, the old slot load drive that Apple, Steve Jobs like notoriously was obsessed with these. Let's see if it takes it. I always, I always felt weird about putting discs in these, um, even up to my MacBook from 2007, 
because I always felt like it was crunching my disc up, but it's actually just how it sounds. <gasps> there it is. <laughs> what a good distance. This is like so appropriate. <laughs> so I installed 10.4 Fox, which is the PowerPC Mac browser. That's like the newest one that you can get. And I got YouTube to go. Um, it didn't work on Safari as you saw in the previous clip, but it's pretty clunky. I'm gonna try to load a video. This is my most recent video. Um, it's about my review of Vokla Doubler. I don't want YouTube Premium. <laughs> I just want to try the video. If you enjoy this video, <laughs> consider supporting us on Patreon um, for just five dollars. And now my cursor just appeared. Get a card oh, in the upper is. right hand corner for more information. Yeah, I mean you can watch YouTube if you want to watch it at uh, you know one frame every ten seconds. Guys, if that, I got something really cool for you today. Yeah, so we are not doing YouTube on this computer. Uh, we will have to. Try GarageBand, however, and some of the other cool stuff on here. But um, YouTube and internet browsing is not comfy at all. So update, I got up this morning. I've made a Leopard install USB. I'm in open firmware right now to get it to boot from it. These old machines didn't boot from USB easily. Um, and we're about to install Leopard. So uh, I'll get back to you when it goes into the Leopard install uh, window. Look at this old boy. You're gonna have Leopard soon, bud. Much more modern, usable operating system than Tiger. Still <laughs> extremely outdated. Not a lot of new software for it, but the software that's available for it is pretty cool. Retro and um, pretty awesome. It's gonna be cool to be on Leopard again. I haven't used Leopard since, like I said, my old Power Mac G5, which I had before I had my original MacBook, which is before my MacBook Air, which is before my current Razer Blade Stealth and Mac Mini. I also had a Mac Pro 3,1 in between there that my dad is now using. There he is, Mac OS X Leopard. So I'm gonna hit next. I haven't seen this in years. Continue. Um, I'm just going to upgrade. It's only a 80 gig hard drive in here, so I might actually, you know, upgrade it if I can find an old IDE drive. But here we go. Installing Leopard, and I'll come back when this is finished. And um, yeah, I'll get back to you. All right, it just completed the installation. Should be booting up into the Leopard install first time setup, which is that iconic song and visual, the 3D graphics they're really pushing. I miss when Apple used to do, you know, startup videos for the first time installs. It's been several years now, but it never gets old. If you hear some cardboard in the background, it's my cat. <laughs> Setup assistant. Here we go. Here comes Leopard. Oh no! I guess they didn't do the, the video on this uh, particular ISO or DMG that I downloaded. Well, that's unfortunate, but as you can see, we're now in Leopard. Dang, I really wish it did that that intro video. Maybe I'll you know post a, a link to it or something in the description of the video. But we're on Leopard now. As you can see, this is a much more modern operating system than Tiger was. Tiger has a lot of cool features and I'm gonna keep the iBook on Tiger just based on classic environment. I wanna run some old OS 9 and 8 stuff. For this guy, I wanna, you know, do what I can with it. And I, I think putting it on Leopard was the right idea. I'm gonna get some more software in here. Again, here's the spec of the machine. It's really pretty powerful for 2006, especially for a power PC machine. I think 2005 was the last year that they made these. I wanna say this one's from like 2003 or four. Yeah, so we're on 10.5.4. Um, there's some more updates I should do, but I'm not gonna worry about it yet. Some cool stuff in Leopard. Here we go, let me go to Finder and then we'll go to Applications. I'm gonna see if I can find some old software to put on here. The first computer I owned was a Power Mac G5 and I bought it outright myself, um, used back in the later 2000s. I got a really good deal on it. This is very nostalgic to me. It takes me right back to, you know, getting that G5 and using it back then. So it's been a little while now, guys, and I've gotten Leopard all up to date. I got a better browser, which is WebKit for Leopard, and then I got um, a few other things installed. But one of the cool things that I wanna try is I downloaded the Ableton Live 7 uh, download from the, the vintage installers on uh, Ableton's website. 
And let's see if we can get this thing installed. I'm gonna save actually using it and recording for you know another video, but I think you know I want to see if it'll install. I also downloaded version one of Ableton, which I want to install on the PowerBook, and maybe we can do a video about making uh, making music with vintage you know computers. All right, here we are um, to install. Live for Mac OS, drag this folder to your hard disk. Let's go ahead and drag that into applications. Should be under live, yeah. Live 7.0.18 um, for OS X, which is OS 10. This is the last supported um, Ableton that supports PowerPC processors and not Intel only. And wow, there it is, Ableton Live 7. So I'm just gonna do try. Um, and we'll do a full video on this, I think, very shortly. But it's incredible to see this after all these years, how little life has changed, uh, especially going from, you know, seven through nine. Version 10 looks pretty new and different, but this is so similar to Ableton Live 9. Really similar to eight. Um, this is actually the version of Live I started on. I, I did seven for a brief time, and then I used eight for a long time. And then when nine came out in 2013, I had that uh, day of launch. Ableton Live 7 was my foray into it. Incredibly cool. I'm gonna do a full video on this in the future, but I thought I would show you the install process because that's really, really cool. Look at that old logo. I have some stickers from this era too. Maybe I'll do a giveaway of those. So originally I was going to look at the 2007 and 2010 MacBook Pros in this video as well, but I figured I didn't want to make this video an hour long, so I decided to break it into two pieces. The next video we're going to look at the MacBook Pros. If you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, make sure to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it, let me know why in the comment section below. If you had an old vintage Apple laptop or maybe even any vintage laptop that you want to share a story about in the comment section, please do so. I am Julian of Julian Gray Media. I will see you next week for the second part of this video. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.